If you're serious about setting your house up to be able to survive a grid down event, then you're going to want to be able to make hot water using the least amount of electricity as possible. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the top three methods for off the grid water heating. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping homeowners and families get their house set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. Now, one of the things I always say is when you're preparing to be able to run your house off the grid, you want to be able to do all of your heating activities, whether it's heating the space inside your house, heating the water or cooking your food. You want to be able to do those heating related activities with an alternate fuel other than electricity so that your renewable energy system and your battery storage system can have longer running time to really focus on powering those things that have to have electricity, like for example, your air conditioner or your refrigerator. And so what we're gonna be looking at today is three great options for off the grid water heating that will allow you to continue to enjoy your creature comforts, like being able to have hot running water, being able to take a hot shower and cook food uh, without putting too much drain or too much draw uh, on your renewable energy and battery system. The first option here on the left is a tankless on-demand gas water heater. That's actually what my wife and I use uh, at our home for our uh, water heating system. Uh, the way that the unit works is as hot water is demanded, you meaning you, you turn on a, a fixture, uh, whether the hot water spigot or the shower, and as hot water is demanded, the unit will actually activate and ignite, and there is a heating coil inside with copper pipes that the flame will heat up those copper pipes, pull the water through uh, as it's demanded, and then ultimately out your, your shower or your sink, uh, your fixtures. Um, the great thing about this is that the electrical draw is very, very minimal. Uh, basically, the only electrical draw is a little bit of spark to ignite the flame, and then the exhaust fan to just make sure that the coils don't overheat. But the actual heating itself, the heat source, is burning uh, gas, which could be either natural gas or what we use here is uh, propane, because I like to be able to, to have a, a good storage uh, of fuel here. So this is a great option. Again, works much like a, a, a tank-based water heater, except the water is not heated until it is demanded. So you may have to turn on the fixture, wait you know, five, 10, 15 seconds for the hot water to make it from the heating unit uh, out your faucet. Otherwise, it operates like any other uh, water heating system. Very, very energy efficient. The second option here is called a heat pump water heater, or sometimes they're, they're called a hybrid water heater. Uh, if you look at the unit, in appearance, it looks like a traditional electric water heater, except the difference is right up here on the top uh, quarter or so of the unit. Instead of using a resistive electric heating element, like what you have in, a, in your stove or in, in a traditional electric water heater, uh, typically, a traditional heating element can draw over 4,000 watts when it's heating, and that can really tax your solar and battery system if you're running in a, in a grid-down environment. So what the hybrid water heater uses instead is a heat pump exchanger system. Um, think of it as a, as a mini heat pump, but instead of heating the air in the entire house, it's simply drawing heat from the ambient air and transferring that heat into the water tank. So it's a much, much lower draw, in most cases less than 500 watt draw. Uh, so you can run it even if you're running in a grid down situation and you're running off battery power at night. That 500 watt draw is roughly equivalent to one refrigerator and one chest freezer uh, running at the same time. So it's not going to be that heavy, heavy draw of a traditional heating element where it might overload your, your backup system. Um, the other nice thing about this is that it plugs right in place with your traditional electric water heater. So if you already have an electric water heater in your home, these can be substituted right in place using the same plumbing and the same electrical circuitry. The only difference is that the amount of electrical draw on that circuit is now going to be much, much reduced. So if you're running off the grid, you can still pretty much continue to consume as much hot water as you want uh, as normal, uh, even during evening hours when you might be running off your battery. And the third option I'd like to show you today is the outdoor wood furnace boiler. Now, the wood furnace boiler is essentially an, an outside combustion chamber that is fed by uh, timber. So typically that's gonna be oak, oak logs that you're gonna uh, place a couple of logs per day into the unit here. And your plumbing system would be modified to send cold water out to the furnace, 
around the combustion chamber to be heated and then back into the home wherever the hot water is demanded. Uh, the nice solution about the, the, the wood furnace or one nice benefit is that uh, it really is renewable. Uh, as long as you have a good source of timber at your house and you don't mind doing, you know, chopping the wood, splitting the wood, storing the wood, you could conceivably have hot water for years and years or indefinitely as long as you're willing to keep up with it. Uh, there is a little bit more maintenance required. There, there's a separate circulating pump that, that pushes the water out, cold water out from the house to be heated and then back in. So there are a couple more uh, small pumps there, but it's not a huge electrical draw. So you can comfortably run this uh, even if you're in a grid down situation where your battery, uh, solar and battery, is your only source of electricity. Um, there are some chores, just like with any wood fireplace, you do have to uh, change the ashtray from time to time and just do some basic, basic cleaning related maintenance. Uh, but it is another great alternative uh, if you'd like a renewable source for your hot water. So again, guys, this has been the top three ways to provide off-grid water heating. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to post in the comments uh, area below. Uh, I'll try to get back to your questions within 24 hours, or if it's something that I think will have broad appeal to the audience, uh, I may do a full-length video answer like what we're doing today. Uh, as always, if you find the information here useful, be sure to go ahead and share this link. And if you haven't already, make sure you click on that like and subscribe button. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.